One of the scariest things about a grizzly bear attack is that they often begin eating their victims while they are still alive. In this episode, wildlife photographer Buck Wild makes a haunting discovery. Heading out into the wilderness, he soon discovers a man being eaten alive by a mother bear and its two cubs. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying bear attack on John Petrani and Buckwild's attempt to save him. Welcome to Final Affliction. Glacier National Park in Montana offers some of the very best photographing opportunities around. The park is home to a variety of species such as bald and golden eagles, otters, lynxes, and grizzly bears. It boasts 700 lakes and over 200 waterfalls set amongst towering alpine peaks, all providing the perfect backdrop for any enthusiastic wildlife photographer. This is what attracted Buck Wild to the region time and time again. He was staying at Granite Park Chalet along one of the many hiking trails in the region. The chalet sits high up on the mountainside, overlooking incredible peaks and valleys. The terrain is rough and rugged and sparsely covered in alpine forests. On October 3, 1992, as Buck headed outside for the day, he took with him his camera equipment, water bottle, and bear spray. He clipped the spray canister to his belt and set off along the High Line Trail. It wasn't long before he heard some muffled growling. He stopped in his tracks, straining his ears to determine where the noise was coming from. He slowly walked forward, peering beyond the trees. Around a slight bend in the path, he came across a camera tripod set just off the trail. He stood still, not wanting to disturb the photographer. When Buck looked again, he saw that the camera wasn't perched on top of the tripod. Instead, it lay in its case on the ground. Then Buck noticed a baseball cap a few feet away. He wasn't sure what was going on. He could still hear some growling further ahead and cautiously unclipped his bear spray. Then he saw a flash of brown and heard the crashing noise of something big heading away from him. Buck crept forwards, clutching the bear spray in his hand. He looked down and saw a sight that set his nerves alight. There, next to his feet, was a pool of fresh blood. Buck's heart thundered in his chest. Adrenaline coursed through his veins as he hesitated on what to do. He decided to follow the trail. The person may still be alive. He couldn't just turn and run. He had to find the victim. He had to see if he could save them. Tentatively, he inched forwards, pushing bushes aside and peering around trees. The trail led him deeper into the alpine woods, further and further from the footpath. He could see where the undergrowth had been trampled, where the body had been dragged. Torn pieces of clothing marked the blood trail. Pools of blood lay where the bear had momentarily rested before hauling its prey off once more. Buck found scattered coins, a shoe, and then, terrifyingly, pieces of flesh. Buck was determined to keep moving forward. He knew he was putting himself in danger. He was knowledgeable about bear behavior and knew that the bear would likely be highly protective of its prey. Any sign that Buck was a threat to the bear and it would surely attack. Buck kept his distance, pausing every so often to listen for the telltale growling of a grizzly. As Buck peered past one more tree, he froze to the spot. He had caught up with the victim. A man's body lay motionless on the ground. His body was torn and shredded. Blood oozed from large, gaping wounds. His eyes were closed. The bear was nowhere to be seen, but Buck knew it was near. It may even be watching him, stalking him. Buck rushed over to the body. It was still warm. He felt for a pulse, but in the panic, he couldn't feel anything. Despite this, Buck knew the man could still be alive. He knew that there was a tiny glimmer of hope that he could be rescued. He didn't want to hang around. He decided he would call for help and return with a first aid kit and jacket to keep the man warm, just in case he was still alive. He backed away from the body, nervously scanning the surrounds for any sign of the bear. When he was a little distance away, Buck turned and ran back down to the trail. He sprinted to the chalet and grabbed his backpack. 
As quickly as he could, he ran back to the spot where he had seen the man. To his shock and horror, the body was no longer there. In the few minutes that Buck had been away, the bear had returned to drag the man further into the forest. Buck was terrified. Sensibly, he decided not to pursue the bear further. Instead, he retraced his footsteps and ran back the way he had come. Once on the trail, he pulled out a small notepad from his camera bag. He hurriedly wrote a note to any fellow walkers and left it secured underneath his canister of bear spray. The note warned other walkers to turn back, as there had just been a bear attack in the area. He also implored any walkers to notify the authorities or rangers. Buck made it back to the chalet. He came across two hikers who were just setting off from the same chalet. He warned them that they must leave. He then wrote another note and gave it to them, asking them to hand it in to the next ranger station they came across. Buck decided to stay at the chalet to warn other hikers of the danger. He stood, alert on the decking, scanning the tree line and the trails with his binoculars. He was looking for any signs of the bear or any signs of potential new victims. Then. He heard a familiar sound. It reverberated off the mountainside and clattered overhead. As it became louder and louder, Buck spotted a helicopter. Two rangers were dropped into the area and made their way over to Buck. They had received news of the attack from a couple of walkers who had come across Buck's note and bear spray. Buck filled them in on the situation and led them back to where the man's body had last been seen. The rangers were armed with shotguns, but it was a dangerous mission. They could see the trail of blood leading further into the forest and anxiously followed it. They spotted the man's body after 300 yards or so. It had been consumed further and was now covered in soil and dirt, an attempt by the bear to conceal it from scavengers. Just at that moment, the three men spotted a mother grizzly bear just yards away with her two cubs. She saw the trio and immediately ran at them. It was a mock charge. The rangers held their ground. The grizzly held hers. There was a momentary face-off before the mother bear turned and left, her cubs trotting dutifully behind. The rangers lowered their guns and decided to call for backup. It was getting late in the day. The rangers called in a team to help retrieve the victim's body. Six rangers headed off the following morning in the direction of the bears. One ranger flew overhead in a helicopter, searching for any signs of the bears, whilst the others approached from the ground. As they closed in on the man's half-buried body, the ranger and the chopper spotted the bear coming for them. He immediately radioed below and the team hastily retreated. The chopper flew in low in an attempt to scare away the female bear and her cubs. It worked briefly. She fled, but within a few moments she was back and threatening the team once more. The chopper flew in low again. The bears stood back, but they didn't allow enough time for the rangers to collect the body. It was obvious to the rangers that these bears were determined to keep their kill. It was her need to survive and provide for her cubs. No helicopter or ranger was going to get in the way of that. Eventually, though, as the helicopter flew even lower, the bears retreated for just long enough to allow the rangers to collect the man's body. They hurriedly carried him away and loaded him into the chopper. He was identified as 40-year-old John Petrani from Wisconsin. He was a regular to Glacier National Park, often spending three weeks of the year photographing wildlife. Tragically, the day he was killed was his last day of his trip before heading home. Park rangers believe John may have accidentally startled the mother bear, who had initially acted defensively to protect her cubs. But then, when John had died from his injuries, the bear's intentions became predatory, an easy meal for her and her cubs. Fearing the grizzly and her cubs would make a habit of preying on future hikers, rangers decided it was safest to kill the bear and her family. It took them nine days to track down the mother and two cubs. They were never 100% sure the trio they shot and killed were responsible for John's untimely death, but it was a decision they felt they had to make. Fearing more unsuspecting hikers and photographers would meet their untimely final affliction.